caravan of Japanese-owned trucks and pleasure cars heads inland from the Pacific. Aliens ordered out of strategic coastal zones, they are allowed all the personal belongings and household goods they can carry. Escorted by troopers, they go to make their homes under Uncle Sam's surveillance for the duration. Here in the land of Buffalo Bill, the government is erecting model camp towns, towns in which they'll live unmolested, not as prisoners, but free to work and paid by the United States government. Bathtubs, yes, all the comforts of home. The Japanese in America are finding Uncle Sam a loyal master despite the war. And here are American-born Japanese repaying that loyalty. Although their ancestors came from the land of the rising sun, these young Americans are volunteers in the U.S. Army, ready to fight and die defending America, the country of their birth. Studying gas tactics, all the strategy of modern warfare, they are proving a formidable and valuable combat unit of the U.S. Army. And on payday, they invest in war bonds, like all good Americans. Newest wingless wonder from the draft boards of U.S. aviation experts. It looks like an animated bug or a flying flounder. But from such radical designs as this come the airplanes of tomorrow. The inventor claims 130 horsepower motor gets some 25% more speed in the wingless plane than in a model of conventional design. But will it fly? Here's the answer. A perfect takeoff and capable of making three miles a minute. Some bug. Air-minded America organizes its civilian pilots for patrol duty out over the vast open spaces of the West. Taking off on regular scheduled flights, they range the skyways, keeping an eagle eye on the lookout for trouble. There, down below, a plane that's crashed. By two-way radio, the patrol flashes the location of the wreck. Headquarters relays the message to a mounted unit, and in a matter of minutes, a fully equipped rescue party is on the way. Reaching the scene more quickly because of the air patrol, they're able to rush the injured pilot to a hospital. A dramatic example of how civilian pilots are helping America's war effort. And here's the U.S. Navy's newest bomber, the Boeing Sea Ranger, sister ship of the Army's famous Flying Fortress. Taking to the water for its first test flight, Sea Ranger is said to be the heaviest armed and armored ship aloft. Its cruising range is a Navy secret, but it'll carry a bigger bomb load a greater distance than any plane in service. over America, guarding the highways and the skyways. The farm of Joseph Marquis is typical of the self-sufficiency of rural Canadians. They raise their own sheep, and from the wool, they even make their own clothing. They produce their own milk and churn their own butter, making more available for the soldiers. Boots for an army? No, just the family. And what appetites? Giant loaves of bread, six and one half feet long, are baked every day from wheat grown right on the farm. There are four sons in the Canadian Army, and today they come home to celebrate their parents' 25th wedding anniversary. When the whole clan gathers, there are 22 in all. They produce all the food they need except sugar, and Mama rations that. 
You might call this Quebec's biggest single meal. A typical Canadian family, all working to help win the war. A bottle is broken upon the bow of a new United States destroyer. And down the ways goes another warship to join America's fast-growing Seven Ocean Navy. In another yard, another destroyer is ready. Ships that used to take two years to build, now completed in seven months. Spectacular tribute to the genius of American workmen. From coast to coast, records are broken. One yard flashes, three destroyers launched in 28 minutes. Another wires, four ships go down the ways within an hour. Transports, building on 24-hour production schedule, seven days a week, are being completed even faster than warships. In one working day alone, U.S. Yards gave the Merchant Marine 27 brand new cargo ships. Here goes another, a sideways launching, but it gets there just the same. American industry is breaking even its own records. Washington. The new United States Chief of Staff, Admiral William D. Leahy, takes over his new post. Personally appointed by President Roosevelt, the Admiral was formerly ambassador to Vichy. Massachusetts. Queen Wilhelmina of the Netherlands, now visiting Princess Juliana in the United States, leaves her home nearby to inspect a corps of seasoned U.S. troops. Making one of her few public appearances since the war, the woman who ruled an empire of 75 million people sees her new allies pass in review, sees in these American troops the hope of the United Nations. New Mexico. Crack bombardiers of the Army Air Force load live eggs aboard their bombers for an attack upon a battleship 1,000 miles from the ocean. Together, they wing their way aloft. Their target, an exact replica in size of an enemy raider. Eyes glued to the bomb sites, they let go with a blast. Direct hits, the first run. Georgia. A sample of the pre-flight physical training program now being given 30,000 naval air cadets. Training to develop muscles, to toughen and harden men for any job assigned. Training that teaches quick thinking, speed, balance, and timing. There's more than one way they can use their heads. Navy pilots must be a cross between tumblers and circus acrobats. Teaching swimmers how to land in a sea of burning oil, just in case. Courses like this, making U.S. pilots the toughest in the world. Somewhere in the Caribbean, picked U.S. Negro troops rush to battle stations for a practice alert. Manning artillery batteries, they take over the complicated mechanism of range finders and plane detectors. Popular wherever they're sent, U.S. Negro troops are winning high praise in every quarter of the globe. Out on the Atlantic, more of the famous Navy patrol boats go into action, searching for submarines with depth charges ready to comb the seas. Powerfully armed to combat anything under the sea or above it, the trim little PTs are writing a new chapter in U.S. naval history. Thank you.